How's it going? Good. Look at you all done up. Now, how's my hair? Do I look all right for this? Do I need? <laughs> you look great. Do I need to call makeup? Little touch ups over here. Have you seen her? Come on, fix this. Here. I know. You look great. I promise. Thank you. You do too. How are you? You good? Yeah, I'm great. Wore out a bit. Um, I'm tired. Lollapalooza was this weekend, so I'm uh, I'm definitely tired, but I'm feeling good. So yeah, was this yesterday? Wasn't it? Were you just on? Was it yesterday you were on, or the day before? I was on Saturday, but we flew back yesterday. So got it. But so you're awake. You're alive. How are you waking up? Like, are you using coffee, Celsius, Red Bull? What's your trick? So I really like Celsius. I think Celsius is my favorite. Yeah. But my mom doesn't let me drink Celsius for some reason. Why? There's but no sugar in it, mom. I think there's something with like the sucralose in it or I don't know, something. But she like doesn't really want me drinking those. And then coffee, like as a singer, like it's just like not very great for your throat. So I'm like trying to find something because I'm very tired. So yeah, I mean, I'm I don't that out. I'm, a crisis. I'm not trying to turn yeah. into a Celsius ad, but that seems like the safest one out of all this. Which is your favorite flavor, by the way? Um, I'm not too picky. I mean, they all taste kind of the same to me. You're right. Yeah. The spark. Yeah. The cola one, the sparkling is my favorite, but anyway. Oh, the cola. Great. I, I feel like I've had them all at this yeah. point. That's really, really good. Uh, where are you right now? Are you at home? Are you at parents' house? Are you in LA? Where are you? I'm in my apartment in LA. Like, okay. um, I'm in Toluca Lake. Are you, without giving your exact location, are you anywhere near Toluca Lake? I have no the like, thing is, I have no idea of any direction in LA. Like, I, I think it's probably because I don't drive here. Sure. Um, but I honestly have no idea, like, where anything is. But I'm I'm near West Hollywood. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not too far. I'm just over the hill from you. I'm over by Burbank where all the studios and stuff are like that. And so. Oh, cool. Yeah, so sweet. Not far from me. So, um, so it's your place. You're not in your parents' place. No. Now that you're all old. Now I'm all old and 18 and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big moves. <laughs> How's that? How's it being eighteen? Happy late birthday. Thank you. Um, it's uh, it. I honestly, I just like my parents are leaving and stuff, so I'm actually getting to like live alone and learn how to be independent for once. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of nice. Like I, I, I love everything I do. Like I just genuinely love my job. So I just, I have a very fun time living alone it's very fun so living on your own now what what have you discovered sucks like because you, when you're living at home you probably have a list of things you got to do i got to take out the trash got to change the cat box all these kind of weird things what are you discovering now that no one's doing that you're like well this sucks i mean one of the worst things is that i have like a lot of like tasks to do throughout the day for like music and stuff and things I have to figure out but then again like my schedule is really busy at the same time and usually my mom's like the one who reminds me of everything like make sure you do this for blah blah for the blah, like sending this blah, blah and so she's like my constant like checklist reminder and I have like the worst memory in the entire world um so I'm kind of scared <laughs> I'm kind yeah. of scared that I'm not gonna remember anything <laughs> well you got all that plus someone's got to clean the toilet someone's got to clean That's the true. shower that too i'm gonna have to learn how to tidy this place up yeah sure. you got to make a run to like bed bath and beyond or something like that and get all those little necessities get the get containers some... and stuff yeah i need yeah, it yeah get the bath mats and all that um <laughs> man if i had a dollar for every time i played you broke me first Aww. good god I, I'm, I'm guessing you're saying the same thing if you had a dollar for every time we played. <laughs> <laughs> thank you that's crazy i mean yeah i still so cool to hear that still. Are, they, are the parents still involved? Who's handling all that you broke me first money? Have you spent all that yet? Have you blown through that? <laughs> um, no, I'm being smart about it. I mean, now that I'm 18 and all, I got to make smart decisions. <laughs> yes. <So. laughs> now that you're grown, is, does it feel different? Does that eight feel a lot different than seven? And I don't I don't be silly with all that. You, obviously, it, is. Old, but. it does feel different. It was like the only birthday that I've actually been like, wow, I do feel a little older. Um, but... Yeah, usually I like absolutely hate birthdays because they're just like the worst feeling ever. Like getting just like a, a whole bunch of attention on you for like something that isn't really that I, I don't feel like I accomplished anything that day. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I say the same but, thing. We didn't have any choice in the matter. We should be the parents should be the ones celebrating the birthday, right? I agree. I'm like, you made me. I don't I didn't do anything. <laughs> I just yeah. got a little 
we didn't have a whole lot of say in any of it. We just uh, came out when you told us to. That's pretty much it, or something less. <laughs> I know something less gross sounding. Um, so now, uh, what's the plan? What's the plan for this year? What's the plan for the next few years? Getting married? Got kids on the way? What's the? Uh... Whoa. <laughs> um, I mean, right now I'm in the process of writing an album, so yeah. that is a lot of time and thinking and lots of uh, very busy days. And then I'm performing at like my that festivals for the first time ever since the pandemic because I, yeah. I haven't ever really gone out and performed before the pandemic. Um, so now it's like getting to experience it all for the first time um, in September and October. And it's it's a crazy schedule. For so the you next get your hands months. full. You're not thinking about marriage or any of that stuff. No, soon, I'm, think, right? I'm taking it day by day for sure. <laughs> yeah. But eventually you're thinking. You... Yeah. One day. <laughs> yeah. One day. All right. Cool. Um, interesting about performing, though, isn't it? And when you were when you were doing Lollapalooza, were there things like afterwards you're like, oh, all right, I need to change that for the for the tour. I need to switch that. That didn't work like I thought. Well, yeah. I mean, for the first, this is actually like, because when you get to festivals, there's so many things that go wrong when you're not like a headliner because you're basically just like going cold turkey on this stage and like you've never tried out any of, you don't, you have no idea what it's going to sound like. Mm. So for the first half of like my set at Lollapalooza, I couldn't hear myself for the first half which obviously is like really terrifying as a performer because you like can't really tell what you're singing yeah. um like thank god i have a great team and i like ran to the side and like you know got it together by the end but i think like the show overall was really great because there was a lot of dancing and it was like the crowd was super super engaged but um it's scary like there's so many things that go wrong every time and you it's kind of all out of your control was it like your in-ears or was it the monitors that were not on. It was like a mix of both. There was like yeah. a whole bunch of feedback. So I had like this like ringing in my ear the entire time. Ooh, um, and then damn. like people talking behind me in my ears as I was saying, it was just crazy. So they may, was it like on the wrong frequency and you're hearing all the backstage chatter kind of thing? Yeah, oh it was, it was, it was a lot. It, it, there was like, and every time I would like get too close to like a, a stereo, it would like be like a horrifying noise in my ear. Oh my <laughs> but God. I guess like, I guess as a dancer, I feel like I'm like very good at figuring things out on the spot. Like I can like adapt well. So it, like my parents like didn't even know this was happening the whole time. And at the end I was like, oh my God, that was a shit show. But <laughs> it, until, uh, until you ran over to this. Day, yeah, yeah, at the end of the day, it was like all my fans were singing like every single word to every song. And that's like all I can really take out of it. And just yeah. be like- I saw them too. They didn't care. They didn't notice nothing. You probably, they probably couldn't hear you singing anyway. They were too busy singing. They were louder than you anyway. What do you say when you run over to the side? You're like, hey, am I in key? Or can you tell those people back there to shut the fuck up? Because I can't hear anything. What do, you, <laughs> what do you say? I basically said, the feedback's in my ears. We need to get rid of that. We need to work on that. I'm like, turn all the reverb off because it's like, yeah. I felt like I was drowning in the pool or something. <laughs> like, I like that. You need to uh, work on that for next so time. Different. We're not taking this anymore. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I like that. That's cool. Get aggressive. But yeah, the, your fans do love you. Your fans lo- love you. They're like, I always say this because I didn't actually know because all you can see on social media is like numbers and usernames and it's all like fake. And that doesn't, it literally doesn't process in my head that they're real people. And then I meet them in real life and I literally am like, I would be best friends with every single one of you. Like you guys are just genuinely awesome people, which is like the best. That's really astute of you to realize that because yes, when you look at usernames on a like, it's just like Jenny 18, blah, blah, blah. It's just numbers and stuff. When you click on their name and then you look and you realize this person has a life. They have a whole life. What did they do today? What did they do yesterday? It's like they become real people. Wow. That's, that's awesome that you realize that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I felt like I came to a lot of conclusions like that in the pandemic where I was like, there's so much going on right now, but none of it feels actually real because it's all like in my phone. <laughs> that doesn't really like, how do you translate that to real life? You don't, you don't know. I, I didn't even think people would like show up to my set because I had no idea of, of my fans in real life yet because I hadn't done anything since the pandemic. Oh my God, so, that is the fear, isn't it? That's the nightmare. Where you come out there oh, on stage and like, everybody nightmare. make noise and there's nobody there. Is that the nightmare? That's the nightmare. The huge nightmare. I've had it multiple times. <laughs> oh my gosh. Are they coming for you? I can hear them in the background, by the way. Yeah, they're coming for me. Is that West Hollywood's <laughs> finest? 
Um, all those fan, all those fans like freaking out over you and stuff. Who do you freak out over? Like in this day and age, I mean, kind of the celebrity has changed a little bit to online social media. But are you still fangirling over actors, actresses, and stuff like that? Brad Pitt, yeah. Jennifer Aniston. Are you friends fan? I mean, are you? Who do you fangirl uh, over? I would fangirl over Zendaya. Um, like musicians, probably like Justin Bieber and Post Malone. I would like die over. Um, and then like actors. Probably Ian Summerholder from um, Vampire Diaries. <laughs> I would freak out if I met him. That'd Uh-oh. be cool. <laughs> Is that your mom right next to you, by the way? Are you are you talking about men? And you're looking over. <laughs> no, no one's oh. your side. Oh, I thought someone was like to your side. I'm thinking your mom's like, hey, stop talking about boys. Oh someone my else. god, no! My okay. mom would never sit beside me in an interview. <laughs> All right, just checking. I'm just making sure. Um, hey, this video. Everybody's excited about this video that you've got um, working. Um, first of all, where was that film? Is that stuff, is that around LA? Are people going to recognize that? that? Um, so actually the location we shot in had never been shot in before. We basically rented out, I think it was like a community college dorm like area. We rented out like a whole section of town. And um, so it like hadn't been filmed in before and it was, we completely like rented out the whole thing and it was sick. It was wow. really cool. Cause like the neighborhood yeah. reminds me of somewhere like f- further east, like Upland Pomona area. Do you like remember even the area that like the neighborhoods and stuff was set up? It was just really far away. That's all I remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> everything. Long- That's everything from West Hollywood. It's tough. That's there's only one in one way in one way out of West Hollywood. So. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Everything's far. Um, and and this song is not from an EP, right? Or it's not from an is it from an album? Cause you just put out an EP. It's like slow down. You just put that out like two months ago, right? Um, I put out the EP pretty early, like in March, I would say. Um, yeah. I think it was in March, but I that one was just a random. I did a whole bunch of collabs like after I had like a little collab era after that, and so those are just like summer singles, pretty yeah. much. So where's this song from then? Is it is it an album or is this kind of a one off? Just kind of throwing stuff out. Working. Yeah. Um, no, that's not a part of an album. That was just like a really fun collab we did. So. Isn't that cool that you just make something and just pop it up? You don't have to have yeah. this whole piece of album. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the best feeling. It's almost scary, though, because you could put something out, and it's not that hard to put something on to Spotify or to iHeart just to upload it. Have you ever uploaded something, and you're like, ooh, let me take that down? I mean, when I was younger, I used to actually, like, me and my mom would, like, update. Like, I would literally just upload random songs that I would record on my own, and they're I don't know why people still like them. Like, that's the thing. I can't really take them off because, like, people love them. Yeah. Um, but I released a lot of those kind of music where I literally would just go on TuneCore and upload random random songs. Ooh, that could be dangerous. You're going to upload something and be like, oh, that's the wrong file. Hold on. Let me. Uh, I know. It's very dangerous. Let me not do that. Um, it's cool looking at some of the comments on the video for, for working, which is the song we're going to play the hell out of and people were uh they're talking about like the people in it like the, they're like hey we're so jealous of the kids that you're hanging out with and uh, like who are who are all the kids and who are the parents in in that in that video or the grandparents or like who are who are all these people do you know them so the, no they were just like random extras i think there were like 75 extras on set it was crazy um but yeah <laughs> they were just random people i met them for the first time in that scene specifically that has to be a trip to yeah. meet all these people and they're like hi guys you're all here for me <laughs> yeah it was very weird it was a yeah. very strange shoot but it was like they were all great and super cool people so what about the clothes and stuff the outfits were those all yours or did you steal any from the set did you take any home did some mysteriously <laughs> disappear i did not take anything home um but no uh, yeah i had like a stylist who basically just like styled me for the whole thing and we had like a whole retro kind of I think it was like an 80s vibe kind of going early 2000s it was it was cool yeah yeah to see it um this song working it's interesting though because people are saying that um like going through going through the comments and stuff they're saying like hey listen to this song is part of my daily routine it's a lovely song and i'm thinking is it is it a lovely <laughs> song because it's all about needing space and we're not working. You just like tricked everybody with the melody and the chord progression because this is like the happiest breakup song ever, isn't it? Yeah, it's actually quite, like if someone sent me that song, I would be bawling because I it was, it's like the that feeling of like, you want someone 
so bad and you like are gonna try and make it work and then you see them in real life and it's like everything's wrong and like it just nothing's nothing's working you're just like not into them um that's a horrible feeling and it's, I don't even know like how I because Khalid came up with that concept and it was just I'm it's a pretty like it's a pretty uh sassy concept for sure yeah it's interesting it is it, but you you have you you just jedi everybody mind everybody's mind because they're all thinking oh man this is upbeat positive chords. I know. it's like no one really knows no because they're like lovely this isn't lovely you're talking about you're missing someone and then all of a sudden they're around you're like oi oh god give me a wish <laughs> it's a very yeah. cool song though um when we play the song is there a favorite part um like when we hear this back on my fm here in LA, is there a favorite part of the song that you like that you're like, hey, listen to this part. This part took me a lot, a lot to do. Or when you hear the song, you're like, oh, I love this little part. I like listen to Khalid. <laughs> I think Khalid's part is great. Um, I'm just obsessed with his voice. And I have been for forever. I mean, that's I would just say his part. <laughs> but yeah. but listen, I mean, the whole thing is a whole. It's like a story. And right. I think you can't really pick out one part of the song because it's like it all shapes like a full story. So very humble you're very <laughs> humble you're trying to put the attention on everybody else is that because you want to you want to put them on or because you're you just don't like the attention i guess that's like you said earlier um i i think it's kind of my personality i mean i've just always been like that since i was a kid yeah i, I honestly the thing is i like don't like attention and like normal aspects of my life but then like i love being on stage and i like love performing i'm a, i gotta like, get obsessed with it uh, it's just like weird because my people would think that like your personality would be the same but for me it's like kind of not <laughs> yeah no I, I get it you know, I've been in radio for a long time and doing stuff on stage for a long time and I'm like you I, I don't like the attention of birthdays my biggest fear was at Christmas when we had the family it was like everybody sits in a circle and you take time opening a present and everybody oh, watches yeah, you <laughs> I didn't want to do that it, it was the worst so I'm the same as you in the I don't like the attention and there's almost a fear of not being on stage, which is opposite of everybody, isn't it? Like if you could be down socializing, you would rather be up on stage in front of 50,000 people, which is backwards from everybody else in the world, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't even, I don't even know. Cause I'm pretty like extroverted when I, when I like socialize, but, but being on stage is definitely like one of my favorite feelings in the entire world, so. Yeah, it's so cool. Um, speaking of stage, so, so you're doing a couple shows um at the fonda two nights you had to add one yeah we had to add a lot of shows second nights which is yeah. so cool it's right there off the 101 off uh hollywood and gower are you driving yourself there or how does this work since you live close <laughs> i don't know yet i haven't gotten that far in my schedule do you uber take a little uber black or uh... probably probably take an uber <laughs> <laughs> that'll, that'll happen most why, likely why not that'd be kind of nice because that's a couple is that a couple shows in on the tour um, I think so. I honestly have no idea when, when this is. Like, I don't know the date specifically. I, there, we just shot out like a million dates for tour. And um, I'm very grateful that they're all kind of like selling out. Uh, but it's... You're, uh, you're I, right. I you do no, need your mom to call and tell you these things because you yeah, don't I'm, seem to I know really anything. Yeah, I really have no recollection of my schedule <laughs> at all. <laughs> no idea. Like, yeah. Let me just let you know. It's a couple of dates in on the tour. So now I wonder if you're going to be sleeping no, in your own no, bed no, or are you going to stay with the crew and then drive or you're going to go home drive yourself. so yeah that's the interesting little thing to figure out yeah i'll figure it out that day probably yeah. <laughs> um well that'd be good uh, we look forward to the show um anything different from those from Lollapalooza? like i said that, that you like okay i gotta switch that up let me change that up what's what is it what does the tate mccray show look like i mean i definitely think that the dancing aspect of it is like everything i want to include and build more and more and more uh, over the next like couple of years. Cause I really think that that like, isn't really getting done right now. And I think it's so cool to be able to dance and sing at the same time. Um, and then obviously we're gonna like weed out songs, maybe add in a few, like probably change the set list a bit. But other than that, yeah, we'll probably keep it similar to festival shows. Who's opening up? Who, who's going with you, do you know yet? I don't know yet. Um, I think this girl named Mimi Webb is coming to a few UK date, dates. And she's I just talked to her a couple of weeks. She's adorable. Yeah, she's uh, she's an amazing singer. I yeah. think she's so good. So, yeah, that'll be exciting. Good choice. There's a lot of uh, singers overseas right now, especially ones I've been talking to a lot lately, like uh, yeah. Tom Grennan and, and, and Mimi and a few others as well. But, wow, good idea. Yeah. 
didn't even think of that. I agree. No, she's she's amazing. So yeah, she's great. Um, all right, you've been great with your time. Thank you so much for letting me steal twenty minutes. What what do you do now? What do you, what what's next? Now I have a meeting and another interview. Um, today's my off day, so I'm just. I'm just kind of chilling today. Isn't that crazy? It's your off day because you're only doing five things instead of the usual <laughs> I know. I'm just chilling. This is All my right. off day. <laughs>